So welcome back to Wooden Tool Man's channel. So what we're going to do in this video is I know a lot of you are probably wondering just how I'm making these little wheels spin on this particular unit. And, uh, you know, I, I probably made it out to be a little harder to build than what it actually is. This is actually a very easy to machine to build. However, it has some significant cost at uh, because there's a gearbox in here, there's bearings, there's, you know what I mean, a bunch of little parts. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm actually going to tear it apart and uh, we're going to have a look and see how I built this one because some of you are obviously, uh, you know, full-time woodworkers. You're going to be able to afford to go spend a couple hundred dollars on parts and uh, build one of these. And, you know, believe it or not, I built this thing when I did it. It was just in a morning. Once I knew the concept of having these little shafts tipped, it just took a morning to build this thing and it's been, I've been using it ever since and uh, really haven't had it apart for <clears throat> years, literally. So I'm not sure what to expect under the hood of this thing, but we're going to tear it apart live on camera here and, uh, and I'll upload it for you guys to see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the camera, we'll get it focused in on this thing and we'll start the, the tear down on it. So folks, it's literally been years since I had this apart, so I don't know what I'm going to expect inside of this thing. But the first thing we'll start off with is we'll get rid of these hockey pucks. So instead of keep your puck on the ice, we're going to keep your, your pucks on your power feeder and your holes drilled in the center and you'll do fine. So there, we'll take them all off now and just get rid of them. Now we're just going to take these other two little nuts off. And actually, I guess I'm just going to leave them on because we're not even going to see that part of the machine anyway. So it's been a long while since I took this apart, so I may have to struggle to find a screw here to get this apart. It's, it's, I haven't really, uh, this is not, this is not something that I do very often. So I know that I have to take this little cover off and that's going to open up into my little dust collection port. And then I know I've got a couple of screws down in here. I got so we'll take one out there and then we'll get to the guts of this thing there and now we'll put another driver bit on and we just got a couple of screws around back here and I should be able to lift that motor assembly right off of there so I'm going to have to take my belt off too so some of you guys are probably going to just build this build yours something very similar to what this one is but some of you are not going to have the money to go and buy you know gear boxes and uh and things like that so you're going to have to just keep watching my videos because what I'm working on right now is designing a much simpler inexpensive machine to build uh, other than this so there we are she's full of sawdust as you can see she is definitely full of sawdust it's been a, like I said it's been literally years since I had this thing apart so now that belt's stuck in there somehow so we'll just move it aside and I'll try to push a little bit of sawdust out of the way here and, uh, and then I'll grab the camera. How about this? I'm going to shut her down. I'm going to grab the air hose. I'm going to blow this thing out. And then I'll start the camera back up. And we'll uh, go over how I made this. So there. We got her all cleaned out now. I can't believe how much sawdust was in this thing. But it's been a couple of years since I had this apart. So it doesn't surprise me. Um, so now... We'll, I'll show you the way that I built this. So I started out when I built this, as you can see, with just a, a piece of... Um, MDF here and I believe it's a little bit thicker I guess this is, looks like it's about a one inch uh, piece you know you could use anything at all uh, the big thing is is you're gonna have to have when you get your 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 shaft lined up with your hockey puck on the end you're gonna have to check it and you know have it about you know so it's coming out about you know 11 16 or 5 8 from the from the surface of your router table and then that way when you it, the springs get tension then you know you could probably go up to you know seven eighths or fifteen sixteenths material uh, so what I did was is I had this fence and then I put this other piece on here so there would be my start and then I put this thicker piece of material in there and that enables me to clamp it on either side of my uh, router table as you can see it works pretty slick I just drilled a hole down in it and then that gives me somewhere to clamp and then I've got my sacrificial fence that I change quite often uh, depending on what material I'm routering, the height of it, I can change the height of my uh, wheels to do a two inch molding just by putting a, a fence on the right height and then I just put a filler underneath of this to, to raise it up in the air and that's why this block is stuck on the end so I can clamp it down here because when I'm doing that high molding I always just clamp it there. 
So now um, this is how I make it work. This is the big secret, and I haven't. It's, I guess it's not a secret. I've been telling you all along that it's because these shafts are angled. They're not running straight. If I were to run it straight to the to the fence, then the material would just wander. It wouldn't, you know, it'd be like a car on the highway. If you got it lined up just perfect, you know, it'll let the wheel go. It'll just run straight. But if you've got it out of alignment a little wee bit, then it just wants to go to the ditch. You know, and if you get one really out of whack, then you can't hold on to it. And that's the same thing with this. Because the shaft is out of, uh, out of straight, you know, the wheel's turning this way. It's pointed towards the fence. It always wants to shove your material into the fence. And it'll work hard to do it, too. If you get enough tip on it, the more tip you put, the harder it's going to push toward the fence. So that's what these are. They're running just, you know, just a few degrees out of straight. Um, you know, this front hole, if I measure it from the end of the fence in, might be, you know, there might be an eighth of an inch difference uh, between the two. So the same thing. So by angling them like that, it makes it pull tight to the fence. Now, you know, a lot of you would think, well, a chain wouldn't run right. No, the chain will run perfect. Uh, this has been running for years. I've never had a problem with the chains running crooked. Uh, so, you know, just set it up and do it, and trust me, and it'll work. Uh, so the next thing uh, is how to spring load it. So with this particular machine, the way I did it was, is I just got some little springs. They're quite a strong spring, too. And, uh, you know, the back side of the bearing, I hooked it down tight. The front side, I just put longer bolts, put the spring in the washer, and then when I put it under load, you can see that them would compress. And, you know, there's an, the, the hole's just enough of the right size that the bearing doesn't wander any. And the same thing on the other, on the front side. So then we just got a set of sprockets here. You know, one runs from the gearbox and then to the first, and then we got one run to the second one. So that runs them both in parallel. So, you know, obviously you got to have sprockets the same size between these two in order to keep them running the exact same speed because you don't want your hockey puck spinning at different speeds that wouldn't work good so then this is made you know i've got this slot in the middle that enables the dust collection to come up through and uh, you know when that box it's on it seals this and then all the dust comes up this port and out so really, a pretty straightforward rig. But like I said, this runs into pretty big costs. You know, you're going to have four of these pillar block bearings, which aren't aren't cheap. You're going to have a gearbox that, you know, if you find one for 200 bucks, you're doing pretty good. Uh, then you're going to have a bunch of little pulleys, a bunch of little sprockets, you know, a bunch of little bolts. So, you know, this machine could potentially cost, you know, over $200. Uh, but with the other way, what I'm hoping to do is if you guys can't build it this way, you guys keep watching because... I've got another way that I'm going to do it, and you've seen it. You know, we're going to have hockey pucks stuck on the shafts the same way, but we're going to have a wooden gearbox. You know, if you haven't seen that video, check out my, my wooden speed reducer, and all it cost so far was four belts, was 20 bucks, and I've got a couple of hockey pucks in it and a few belts. Now, I do got a couple of sprockets on the end, but I'm not even 100% sure that I'm going to use them because, you know, they cost money and they're hard to get. We're going to try to come up with a way that's even simpler to build and does the exact same thing as the first power feeder that you've seen. So, you guys keep tuning in. Hopefully you like my videos and I thank you for watching this one.